Now, all this week, Mobile World Live has been looking at how the latest technology is making our cities smarter. These smart spaces are driving a wide variety of requirements, and technologies such as edge computing and AI are helping to support these new applications. In this discussion, Adam Scrabber of NVIDIA, Jeff Sharp of Supermicro, and Peter Yarrick of GSMA Intelligence will share examples of some of the most innovative smart space implementations, and they'll be explaining how they worked with integration partners and customers to make them happen. Gentlemen, it's great to have you with us today. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Thanks for Peter, if I can come to you first, um, the very concept of a smart city, it's not new. Uh, before we dive a bit deeper, what's your assessment of where we are today, Peter? Can we say that smart cities are a true reality? Yeah, no, I think it's a, it's a great point in terms of not being new. And, and you know, in particular, I think it's why it's important when you use a term like smart spaces, why we talk about that, because you know, the, the idea of a smart city is, is sort of vague, right? And so we've been talking about this for, for years, but that means we've been talking about different degrees, right? You know, does it count to say you have a smart city implementation if you've launched one or two applications, two use cases, if they're in silos? So I think that we're, you know, a lot farther along than when we first started talking about this, you know, years ago, right? But there's still a lot to achieve in terms of connecting sort of disparate use cases and moving to this idea, I think, of smart spaces where we're not just thinking the whole city needs to be a smart city all connected, but the recognition that there are different use cases, different purposes for the different types of applications within a city. And we need to, we need to acknowledge that. Yeah, absolutely. And and to bring Jeff into the conversation, I know that Supermicro uh, specifically likes to look beyond the idea of smart cities. And indeed, you do use the notion of, of smart spaces. Um, Jeff, can you start sharing some examples with our viewers of some really innovative smart space implementations? Uh, what's caught your attention? Yeah, a few things. Um, I think you hit the nail on the head, uh, Peter did, on in regards to smart cities is now kind of migrating to a smart places. Smart cities is such a broad term been used over the you know years and years. And from a super micro perspective, we see it as kind of an edge to cloud mentality. You know, we build a common platform both at the edge and we also build a common platform for uh, the cloud environment. And when you get into smart spaces, it's all about inferencing. It's about, you know, speeds, feeds, uh, inferencing techniques that has to be done at the edge. Um, and we see that in, in different aspects in, in smart places. You see uh, smart venues. You know, these are stadium environments that are including more advanced technologies, AI, inferencing, uh, you know, things like improving customer experience. We all want to have fun, especially, you know, in these times. And, and as we get back to normal, using these technologies creates a better customer experience. And how that ties into the rest of the infrastructure from transportation to the stadium, transportation within the, the smart places and the cities uh, uh, as well, security, all of those things can play a, a big role into smart places using a common-based infrastructure. Let's bring in Supermicro's partner, NVIDIA. Um, Adam, how is NVIDIA helping to power some of these smart space applications that Jeff just highlighted? Sure. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I think to start with, I would say that um, AI is really overhauling a lot of things uh, right now, and uh, particularly in, in the types of problems that we can tackle in smart, in smart spaces. Um, you know, as Jeff mentioned, whether we're talking about intersections or airports, uh, reducing traffic congestion, um, AI is overhauling how we write software, how we, how we deploy um, solutions, um, you know, just, just how, the, the, the type of capabilities that, that we can bring to bear right now. So NVIDIA helps um, in, in, in three main ways. First off, we uh, work very closely with uh, our developer community to bring AI vision uh, capabilities uh, to, to market much faster, much more easily with, with tools and SDKs. Uh, we're building a really world-class ecosystem of specialist partners that are uh, you know, specialists at airports or specialists at, at, at traffic, for example. Um, so, so you know, we're we're sort of building out the capability 
uh, of these solutions uh, to, to, to a huge degree. Um, and, and lastly, we're, we're working with um, partners like Supermicro to bring all of these solutions, all these, de- you know, all these deployments um, out to the edge uh, with world-class enterprise you know, computing and, and support. And, and can I add to what Adam was saying is, is one of the key attributes is, is, is when, you, when you say the word AI, people tend to scoot back and say, oh, my God, that's so complicated. Do I really need to implement this artificial intelligence and doom and gloom? But with our partnership with NVIDIA and their architecture team and our architecture teams working together, it's a piece of cake. You know, our technologies are becoming so user-friendly, not just from an inferencing model, but also from a, a training and learning models as well. So that that leap into AI is becoming not just shorter, but easier for the end customers. Yeah, and if I can expand on that, and with all the players that are in the ecosystem as well, Jeff, um, you know, many of our viewers will be from the service provider space. Uh, they'll they'll be keen to know what kind of role operators should be playing um, in the deployment of these smart spaces. Uh, what what do you think should be the role of of operators in this? Wow. So. With experience working in the smart places perspective, if you think about the infrastructure that makes up a city, so you have the local municipality, the government system, you have, if you're dealing with emergency services and the transportation, you could be dealing with the federal transportation dot, the state dot system, the citywide dot system. You have a a fairly significant broad reach of players that are trying to, to build this intelligent system. And really the one that glues it all together is that communication cycle. It's it's how these devices not just communicate at the edge, possibly using wireless technologies, possibly using wire-based technologies. They're kind of that seam work to make everything happen. And because of the 5G implementation, you know, it's becoming greater with, you know, beaming technologies and split spectrum and higher speeds. The operator is really critical for that integration. They're going to be working with those different municipalities and government systems and private systems to put it all together. Because, again, a lot of that connectivity, whether it's V2X, whether it's a, a smart light pole system or, you know, something as advanced as, you know, a traffic management in case of a wreck, making things 100% AI needs that high-speed communication uh, attributes, and the carriers are perfect for that environment. And I have to say, too, the thing that I'm, I'm an old guy, so one of the key things I've noticed in the past is that um, people see the carriers as kind of that archaic model, but over the past five or six years, we're seeing a more influx of younger talent, you know, better vision of how to integrate AI and these type of capabilities and, and NVIDIA silicon and architectures that, that meet that uh, computer vision, machine vision, and, and the communication attributes. So it, it's a really cool environment now that we're seeing with a lot of new blood and excitement. Adam, do you agree with Jeff's uh, assumption there that this is a really big opportunity for operators? I, I, I absolutely agree with with Jeff. I think I think he's right in in, in basically every every way. I think that um, I think that these these operators have you know they already have a great business model and and, and a way to to provide services to to their customers. I think that that um, what we're talking about is really some some brand new kinds of services. But they have that that channel to market. Um, they also have the ability to, you know, as we as we mentioned, the fact that with with AI and some of these uh, these services and these capabilities, there it's really compute intensive, and and it ends up being an edge computing play, and uh, and they're actually you know a perfect uh, they're a perfect channel to get that com- compute out to the edge and and those and, de- and deploy those services. So yeah, I, t- I totally agree. And, and Peter, can I ask for you, for your opinion as well? Does this require a, a kind of change in mindset from operators, or is this a continuation of, of kind of areas that they're they're very comfortable working in? So I think I think it's both, right? And, and if we think about the, the number of IoT use cases, and, and in reality, right, smart cities are an IoT use case. They're all great opportunities for operators. But if you think about connectivity in a manufacturing plant, if you think about connectivity, let's say in an agricultural use case. Not always necessarily the best fit because it's more localized. But when you're talking about the idea of a smart city, you need that comprehensive 
connectivity layer, right? And so I think that's where the smart city, as we heard, you know, just putting it very bluntly, that's where it's a great fit for what operators are doing. They do need to think differently, and you are seeing that as they move into edge, there's some great opportunities there, and they need to think differently in terms of partnering, right? Making sure they have the right partners in terms of, you know, the specific use cases, the specific markets they're working with. The good thing is, I think we've heard that already, you know, sort of put into a different term of sort of AI being scary versus AI being easy. You know, we're definitely in an era of sort of democratization, right, where the capabilities to take advantage of it are are more broadly available, right, which which makes it easier for operators to put it into the hands of, of any of their customers, including the smart cities folks. I'd also like to add, too, if you think of operators and the journey that they've led over the past, let's say, 10 years in virtualizing their network, what that's doing is it's a proven case. They believe in high availability. Everything is now being virtualized. They have an edge to cloud mentality already. So what great uh, integrator it is to put it all together and and handle that integration, especially in a virtualized and containerized environment. They have the right infrastructure. They have the right know-how now, and they're the right folks to integrate it and, uh, and implement it. Uh, We started off at the beginning of this discussion by pointing out that smart cities uh, are not particularly new. uh, But of course, it has been a very turbulent uh, 12 months or so uh, for for our industry and and many others as well, gentlemen. I'm just intrigued to get your thoughts on what impact you think the pandemic, the global pandemic, sadly, has had on deployment of of these smart spaces. Um, Intrigued as well to understand if it's perhaps kickstarted the emergence of new use cases that will actually drive further smart space innovation. Uh, What do you think maybe uh, come to Adam first on that? Um, how, how How has the pandemic impacted this space? Well, it certainly has shifted, you know, the spaces as we talk about smart spaces. I think it shifted the smart spaces, how how these spaces are getting used and, and interactions with people. Um, you know, I think that I think with COVID nineteen, I mean, it's a new context. Uh, context it and it defines a shift of interactions, but but it's not fundamentally, you know, in particular if we think about AI spaces or smart spaces kind of turning into robots. If you kind of, if you think about a building and you think about an intersection, I think what we're seeing is, is uh, automation sort of taking over. I think it's a new context. I don't think it's necessarily the things that we need to fundamentally do from a, you know, from a perception point of view from, from AI. Um, you know, if you think about um, occupancy, just basic things, occupancy now really matters. Um, you know, how many people are in a space? Th- those are fundamental things that, uh, th- that is, there's not ne- necessarily new capabilities, but that, but, um, but but the, in 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 the context that we're in now, it actually becomes really important. Um, how many people are wearing masks? These are you know these are things that that people in, in many other countries have been doing for for many many years, decades. Um, they're becoming more important. I do think that um, that what we're going to see is a lot more automation. Um, you know, if you think about automation um, from the point of view of maybe access control, touchless, contactless, frictionless access control, these are things that that'll, that I think will. Um, what we have already, but I think they're going to be rolled out a, a lot more. You know, and as a, it's a very simple example, but but I think it's interesting. That recently, um, you know, there was an automated uh, or a, a smart home doorbell uh, that that was recently released with a doormat that said, you know, stand on me at, to ring the doorbell. You know, these are examples where very simple automation techniques that that I think are going to going to be uh, rolled out a lot more uh, widespreadly in, in more widespread fashion now. Jeff, do you agree with that? You think maybe priorities have changed somewhat and, and we are going to see some uh, some unheard of innovation? Uh, absolutely. Adam hit the nail on the head. And, and what this whole pandemic has also done is it's forced innovation. It's forced different cycles of automation and innovation all together. Um, you know, I, I miss going out with my friends and socially, you know, being in bars and restaurants and all that. However, what I'm seeing, though, is is um, more technology getting into that environment, as, as he said, occupancy, you know, using intelligence to reduce the amount of occupancy within a, a, a restaurant or a hotel or a lobby. And that's reusable. And, and for us, it's all about reusable platforms and, and analytical data, things that we're kind of building a common workflow, a common hardware-based architecture with our friends at NVIDIA and, and the architecture around that. So all the things that we're doing during this pandemic is reusable. These are reusable areas of, you know, um, 
uh, face mask recognition could be other things. It could be other type of recognition techniques, uh, looking at a dog versus a cat versus a car versus a fire truck. You know, by setting up that infrastructure for the pandemic is reusable in different areas that, again, that innovation and, and startups. Oh, my gosh, there's all these new you know, AI-based startups that are helping the innovation cycle uh, from a software perspective to, you know, enables the... Uh, the users of the technology to hit that easy button. So we're, we're definitely seeing a, a greater sense of technology being deployed within the past year than I think that we've seen earlier than that, especially on simplification. Let's get some closing thoughts now. Um, is there a message here for companies that are looking to roll out critical services um, in their own spaces, Jeff? Um, is there a roadmap that can e be easily conveyed to them, do you think? Uh, absolutely. And, and I'll, I'll provide just some real brief examples. One is uh, a lot of the entries, uh, they don't know how to do this. They really, and, and, you know, I want to set up a camera. What kind of camera? What's the, the frame rate? Is it high resolution versus re low resolution? Oh, my God, how many boxes do I need? How many compute systems and, and, and video cards that, that I need? Is it compression? What type of compression? How do I decode? So all of these different questions are coming out. And what we're doing is, is we're setting up engineering forces and, and training forces to be able to understand all of these use cases and the type of hardware and software that's really required. So for us, I think it's awesome. And we're also seeing more and more heavy-duty workloads that go on these systems because, you know, sometimes power is, is of value. So putting these, these systems at the edge that requires less power, we now have the ability to do that from a technology standpoint with, with NVIDIA. And uh, on that note, Adam, any closing thoughts from NVIDIA's perspective? Yeah, I think that um, I, I would just add that I, I think as as we all look to 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 roll out services and and, and look for for new capabilities, I think it's really important to uh, look for partners and platforms that you can grow with. I think that right now we're we're in a in a in a chapter in in this journey where uh, packaging up solutions is going to be really important and and leveraging. Um, a platform that you can grow with. Um, we're, we see a lot of partners start with a very few set, you know, very focused set of capabilities that they're interested in, but very quickly they want to, you know, to roll out more, more services, more solutions, and, and more capabilities. So the platform, the packaging really matters. So I would uh, urge you to, you know, to, and for example, I mean, we're just, for us, for NVIDIA working with, with Supermicro, I mean, it's, this is a classic example of, of two, you know, two two sort of major 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 players in in, in the market building a platform um, with an ecosystem that's that's second to none, um, and an ecosystem here matters more than ever. It does take a village. I mean, smart you know, uh, smart cities, smart places. Again, it goes back to that. It takes a village mentality for sure. And with that, unfortunately, we are out of time. But it's been a great discussion, um, some fantastic insight. It's uh, it's obviously clear that smart spaces, well, they're not just the future. They are already here. And we've heard of some great use cases being enabled by technology, uh, particularly the use of AI and edge computing. Jeff, Adam and Peter, thanks very much for sharing your thoughts with us as part of the latest Mobile World Live themed week. Thank you very much.